Tonight, we'll be going over the top 10 responses to 1D4. What opening will be the most popular? Uh, let's see what your guesses are. Maybe you'll be surprised. This is Chess Openings Explained. All right. Yeah, exactly. OK. So yeah, tonight we are going to be doing another top 10 list. Um, this was requested by several people. Um, the one that I saw first was Maruf Sarkar, who, uh, who wrote, waiting for top 10 most popular responses to 1D4, chess openings explained. Um, Jonathan Morales also said that would be awesome. So for you guys, that's what we will be doing. And we will do this a little bit differently than we did for our uh, top 10 E4 openings. Um, we're actually going to go into specific variations. And uh, you'll see what I mean in just a moment. But when we did the E4 video, we covered like 99% of all E4 games. Tonight, we're only going to cover 51.9% of D4 games. So you better request obscure D4 openings, top 10 list, if you want to see that. But let's get right to it. Coming in at number 10, we have the Queen's Gambit Accepted, which in my database of almost 2.5 million games that started with 1D4, it's been played 53,000 times, or about 2.19% of the games. So you don't see it a whole lot. But it is kind of fitting that the, uh, the first one that we're going to look at tonight is what happens when you accept the gambit. Um, almost all of these openings tonight, white is going to play d4 and c4. That's what he's trying to do. And whenever you encounter a gambit for the very first time, uh, the big question you want to ask is, well, what happens if I accept it? And we'll try to understand, you know, why isn't this as popular as, say, uh, protecting it with one of your pawns? So let's take a look at it. Uh, the queen's gambit accepted. Um, so black voluntarily takes away from the center. And his aim isn't to play b5 and just hold on to that pawn forever, um, because that normally just doesn't work out for him. White almost always regains the pawn. If uh, The machine's very sensitive, so I, I, I can't be putting it on the board. But if you can imagine b5, white usually attacks it with a4 and b3, breaking up the queen side. And even if you don't get the pawn back, which you usually do, uh, you do get terrific compensation in the fact that the whole queen side is opening up, and that's where white has more space. Um, so you might be surprised that the most popular move in this position is actually knight to f3, which prevents black in all sorts of lines from playing the move e5, even if it's uh, a pawn gambit. White's just going to play e3, and he's going to take on c4, and not allow black to uh, free his position here with the move e5. All right, knight f6 e3, e6. And now, since you've voluntarily given away the center, black needs to come up with some sort of way to attack the center. When you give your opponents the center, you want to be able to attack it. Otherwise, they just get the center for free. Uh, white does, at the moment, have more central pawns. So black is thinking, I'm going to play the move c5. And I'll be able to attack the, the, the center. And that is indeed what happens in this position. All right. So very often, he'll be able to take on d4 and isolate the d-pawn. So white here can castle. And you might be thinking, well, you put this pawn on e6, so what's to become of this bishop? Well, black's plan for this guy is to play a6, and if allowed, b5, and the bishop will go onto the long diagonal, where he'll actually be quite useful. Um, so after a6, um, it's possible to just you know, play a, a simple move, like knight to c3 or something. But the most testing way is to prevent b5 with the move a4. OK, so black will, will develop. And now, uh, if you haven't seen this position, this move might surprise you a little bit. The queen moves away from protection of the d-pawn. So it now appears that black is attacking the d-pawn three times, and it's only protected twice. So black takes it. But uh, what the move that white's counting on in this position is rook to d1. And now he'll be able to take back on the next move. Um, so after some more developing moves, we take back. You get the, uh, an isolated pawn position. And after a few more moves here, uh, black will continue with a plan either of knight b4 to d5. Um, this is a very common technique when you're playing against the, the isolated d-pawn. He might also consider starting with knight to d5. And white should objectively have a, uh, a slight edge in this position. He does have some really nice squares for his pieces. The knight has a nice home. The bishop is going to be able to get out. The rook is going to enter the game. 
Um, and white will be playing for an attack. And black will be playing to uh, hold on, survive the attack. And in the long run, uh, this D pawn may end up being a weakness. So for people that uh, like playing these positions, uh, this is a, a good opening for you. So that's it. That's the queen's gambit accepted. All right, coming in at number nine, we have the Trumpovsky, which is, uh, has been seen in 56,000 games, accounting for 2.34% of all D4 games. And this is the only opening that made the list that doesn't begin with d4, c4. Instead, after d4, knight f6, bishop to g5. And there are several ways you can play against this. The most popular is the most aggressive move, knight to e4. Um, also very playable, e6 is popular, d5, c5. Uh, these are all candidate moves in this position. But knight to e4, leads to some very interesting and exciting positions. Um, OK, the first thing is, right, you're attacking my, my bishop. And, white and black will either continue with d5 or c5 in the near future, d5 tending to be the more solid approach, c5 leading to the more aggressive positions. And white already has to make a choice. Where are you going to put your bishop? Um, it is possible, it should be mentioned, to play h4 and allow him to take your bishop in an effort to open the h file. But uh, the two main choices are bishop to f4 or bishop to h4. And at the, the top level, overwhelmingly the most popular is bishop to f4. But we'll take a look here to try to understand why. We'll take a look at bishop to h4. All right. Black now can aggressively attack the center with the move c5, um, attacking the dark squares. Because white is very likely to weaken some of the dark squares in his position in order to expel this knight. So he plays the move f3. All right. Now, he's, you might be thinking he's just going to go back. But this next move might shock you. So brace yourselves. Are you ready? g5. All right. Glad you made it. Glad you made it. Come on in. All right. So the bishop is attacked. It doesn't have anywhere particularly good to go, because anywhere it moves, the knight will be able to take it. So white takes on e4. Can you shut the door, please? All right, thank you. All right, we take the bishop. And now let's try to understand this position. So uh, black is attacking your center. Uh, white will somehow need to consolidate the center here. Uh, black's next plan is to get this bishop out to g7 and even to h6. These are both very possible moves. So after the standard move e3, bishop to h6. All right, so how are you going to protect your pawn? The most common way is king to f2. OK? So I mean, all right, occasionally we're thinking about this sacrifice, bringing the king into the center. But it doesn't work right now. So all right, also black has this idea. When you move your c pawn, the queen will be able to come out on this diagonal. And in this variation, she'll often go to b6, where she's putting some pressure on the b pawn. OK? So after takes, queen b6. And white is best advised to just give away the b2 pawn if black wants it. He needs to do something active uh, in order to get some compensation here. So he's not worried about material. Knight to c3 with a very large and annoying threat of knight to d5. So if you just take the b2 pawn here, knight to d5 is actually quite annoying to deal with. So black should play e6, preventing this idea. And after knight to f3, uh, we get this sort of a, a position where, obviously, right, you can go ahead and take the b2 pawn if you want. But more common is just to develop your pieces. And we'll see kind of a theme tonight. Uh, in a lot of these openings, you don't just take stuff that's hanging. You just develop your pieces and castle. So we're going to see a lot of that tonight. And OK, in this position, white can play like bishop to b5. And white has pretty decent pieces, but obviously the fact that this king isn't incredibly comfortable, uh, gives black a lot of chances here, which is why uh, the move bishop to h4, if we go back to this position, is not the most popular at the top level. Instead, most people prefer bishop to f4 with a slightly different uh, game, but black starts in the same way, c5. Other moves are possible. He, you, know, you can play d5. You can even play g5 here. C5 is the, uh, the most popular, and it's uh, consistent with his theme here of attacking the center. OK, F3. 
So knight f6 is a, you know, a decent move. Um, this way, the bishop isn't able to uh, take it. If it was over here, he could take and double your pawns. But a, uh, an accurate move here, queen to a5, forcing white to put a, a pawn on c3. So now your knight's not going to go to c3 because you put a pawn there. And all right, so after you deal with uh, the threat of your knight, you're going to be threatening the positional threat of uh, c takes d4. The knight retreats. Knight to, knight to d2. Um, and the point will be revealed after black does take knight to b3. All right, so you're going to move, and then we're going to be able to take the d pawn. Uh, most commonly, they go to b6. And after white takes with the queen, and you know, he might get a decent game. Maybe he'll be able to play e4 soon. Maybe he'll be able to double black's pawns on b6, which is the, the most common way to play here. So knight to c6. So you do get to double the pawns. Um, black is hoping for some compensation along the a file. And he's hoping to uh, get developed a little bit faster than uh, his opponent here. But after the move knight to d4, black has a very, very interesting move. e5. And OK, if you take here, we take your bishop. And when you move back, uh, we'll kind of leave the position here. Black obviously has lots of weaknesses over on the queen side and in the center, but he does have some active pieces. And uh, white still has to demonstrate that he knows how to develop his king side. So such a position is really interesting. Um, will white, black be able to do something with his uh, development lead and his initiative? Will that turn into something? Will white struggle to get his king side pieces out? Or will he find a way to liberate his position, get his pieces out, and take advantage of all the weaknesses in uh, Black's territory over here? So that's the battle, um, and that is the Trumpovsky. All right, coming in at number eight, a uh, really aggressive opening, the Dutch. Um, so this is the only opening here where Black doesn't either start with d5 or knight to f6. And this has been played 86,000 times, or 3.5% of all d4 games. OK. Uh, and there's more than one way to play against the Dutch. You can play c4 here. You can play knight to c3. You can even do the Staunton gambit, e4. h3 is even a move. Just planning on playing g4, sacrificing. g4 is a move. There's all sorts of crazy gambits and stuff. But the, uh, the most popular response here from white is g3. Um, OK, so with the Dutch, it's, uh, it's interesting. Black is taking a lot of space on the king side. And he's hoping that uh, he's not weakening too much stuff. Um, it is interesting, kind of when we did the, uh, the Scandinavian, I asked, is this sharp, solid, suspicious? People have sort of the same feelings about the Dutch. Um, it can be solid. You know, the stone wall is about as solid as it gets. Um, also, it does lead to some really crazy you know, sacrifices and you know, really aggressive games. Um, but is it suspicious? You know, you're moving your F pawn. Doesn't that weaken your king? Uh, yeah, so it's, you know, people have all sorts of different feelings about it. OK, but now we'll go just a few more developing moves. And black can consider developing classically, e6, uh, you know, bishop to e7, um, and castling. That's one very common way to play, in which case the queen will be maneuvering to uh, queen to e8 to h4, h5, sorry, and getting on with a kingside attack. But uh, the Leningrad is the most popular way. Black is going to put his bishop on this very aggressive diagonal, and he's going to castle. So here, both sides. Uh, we'll develop their pieces pretty, pretty normally. Um, and after we castle, now white will play c4. He does intend to take more space on the queen side before he continues. And we'll assess the position after the moves d6 and knight to c3. Now, uh, white's plan is to move all over on the uh, queen side, usually with moves like d5, you know, b4, c5. These are the moves that he's going to hope to accomplish. Uh, he very often, he's going to have to get his rook off of this long diagonal here so that the, the bishop never ends up taking him. And black, if he's ever able to play the move e5, is usually doing really well. So white needs to take great care not to allow uh, this liberating move for black. And all right, there's, there's more than one way black can play here. Um, queen to e8 is the most popular. Knight to c6 also is a very interesting line. Um, we'll take a quick look at the move c6 here. In this position, white can play the move d5, getting control 
over some of these light squares, uh, getting you know, a little bit more space. But obviously, you are weakening this diagonal, so that needs to be taken into account. Um, so yeah, he has to play e5. And part of the point of playing d5 was now you can take on passant. And you get a position like this, where your c-pawn is attacked. You can defend it with your queen. You can get ready to bring a rook in. Uh, this is a very you know, interesting way to play. Black might consider maneuvering his knight around. Uh, you get a very interesting game. But more popular in this position is queen to e8. All right, so he's going to play e5. So white needs to stop it by playing d5. There are other moves, but uh, generally this is the, the principled way to continue. Um, sometimes this knight will even go where it controls some of these light squares as well. And right, white's just going to play here and here and here. That's his plan. OK. So sensing that uh, this square was, was recently weakened, the knight is going to jump in. As advertised, the rook is going to come over. And uh, OK, you get a, an interesting position. We're really trying to get a grip on the position. And at some point, he's going to attack the center. And this is sort of the style of game that you're going to expect. And at some point, Black is hoping to get this move in and launch a kingside attack. Um, he's going to get all these pawns rolling. If he ever gets these guys rolling, the queen will be able to come over. And so sometimes white just wins on the queen side, and then he just positionally crushes Black. And sometimes Black gets a really big attack going. Uh, so it's, it's a very interesting way to play. Uh, and that is the Dutch defense. Coming in at number seven, in opening, we talked about kind of recently uh, the Grunfeld. This has been played 88,000 times, or 3.65% of all D4 games. Um, so let's get the Grunfeld on the board. Now, in this position, uh, after knight to c3, white intends to play the move e4. So if you play bishop to g7, e4. Um, but this is black's last chance if he wants to put a pawn in the center. Uh, so I'll, the way that I showed uh, last time is the most popular, the exchange variation. Not the only way to play, but a very principled continuation. Uh, you can trade a side pawn for a central pawn. It makes sense to do so. And after they capture e4, and after the trade, we start to see uh, the position unfolding here. Black's big target is going to be the d4 pawn. He's going to gang up on it. Bishop to g7, c5, knight to c6. And he's going to attack it with everything he has. Um, so I recommended in my other video bishop to c4. The point, oh, it's not, the computer's not going to like that. Uh, bishop to c4, the idea is you can put the knight on e2, and you never have to worry about this bishop pin because you can play f3. So that was one way. But I did mention briefly the modern way to play. So uh, we'll go over that now. Knight to f3, which surprisingly was thought to be a mistake for a long time, because you are allowing black to, at some point, play bishop to g4. Um, so you can play normal moves, c5, knight to c6, castle, and then bishop to g4. And you're going to run out of defenders of the d-pawn. So we'll see what's going to happen. So after c5, the move that, you know, uh, revived this opening is rook to b1. The idea being, if you move your bishop, your b-pawn is, is going to become weak here. This does often allow a sacrifice here. <clears throat> the a2 pawn is, a, is likely to be captured by black, and it should be in most lines. After cd4, cd4, queen d5, bishop d2, queen a2, uh, you will be losing this pawn, and so we will be checking that out. But here, castles, some normal moves. And it is advisable that you capture now and play queen to a5, and yeah, you take the a2 pawn. After knight to c6, which is, uh, you know, seems like a very normal move. You know, I don't want to go in for the gambit. White actually is really well prepared to meet this with the surprising move, d5. OK. And isn't this just giving away the c pawn here? Well, black normally doesn't take it. Uh, we'll go back to that variation. But after such a position, white can play the unusual but very strong queen to d2. You're going to play f4, get the big center, kick the bishop away. Um, so in a continuation like this, 
He can go back either to C7 or G7, but White is going to get a, a monster center. He can play C4, he can castle kingside. Uh, White should have a very good position in this line. But, okay, what happens if I take this pawn? Um, and yeah, so sort of a lot of lines in this lecture, you don't want to just take stuff. It doesn't end up well. You want to develop your pieces and castle. Here, bishop to d2, and you have two pieces attacked. So you have to part with your, your best friend, your dark squared bishop. Um, and now you have to move your knight. Okay, knight a5, it's not super unusual in this opening, but it's not perfectly ideal in this position. And uh, you might like white's next move here. H4, here I come. Uh, play might continue, bishop to g4. H5, not joking around. Um, a big mistake is taking. So you might want to pause your video and see what white would play here. There's a couple of good moves, but one move is really, really strong. And that move is g4. Uh, okay, I'm going to take your bishop. If you take, you're not going to like queen to h6. Even if you block knight to g5 and mate is right around the corner. So, okay, so here you can take the knight and uh, white still gets a really nice attacking position. At some point he'll open the h file. He's going to get his queen into h6. Uh, this should be very pleasant for white, which is why back in this position here, after, uh, sorry, in this position, instead of just developing knight to c6, you know, casual play can sometimes, especially in something as highly theoretical as the Grunfeld, land you in a lot of trouble. Uh, he should instead take on d4, throw in the queen check, and take on a2. And all right, we'll castle and we'll take a look at this uh, position here. So black is up a pawn, and he has a 2 to 0 majority on the queen side. So that's pretty good. Uh, but will white be able to do something with his big lead in development? That's going to be the, the real test. OK? So after a move like bishop to g4, you uh, should resist the urge to play rook takes b7. I know that sort of seems like what the thing is. But don't just take stuff. You should develop your pieces and castle. If you play rook takes b7, Let's see if we can, we can imagine it. Uh, he will take your knight, and when you take back, your d-pawn will be hanging. So don't, you don't want to just rush in and take stuff. Uh, the main move here is actually bishop to g5, which provokes h6 before going to e3. Now, you might be wondering, what if I just take stuff? But again, don't just take stuff. Put your pieces on good squares. Uh, if you take this, after you know, move like this, um, you know it seems like you're you're doing really well. You took both the pawns, but actually black stands a little bit better in this variation. So even after some some normal moves, uh, if you lose this guy, then you're probably not doing well. The the center was was the big thing that you had there. So you got to be careful. You know you're not just you don't want to just take stuff, and especially if you've never even seen this, and your opponent plays h6 here, they know full well their e pawns hanging. So you better be careful. Think about what they're, they're planning. Well, he's trying to convince you to trade some pawns so he can get your big center and uh, weaken your position. So just put your pieces on good squares. Now the threat of taking on b7 is real. Um, but again, in this position, uh, well, I can show rook to b7. If you take here, uh, he's going to get one of these files for his rooks. And then his rook is coming down to the second rank. You can try to stay on the seventh rank, but after rook f to c8, uh, you're kind of compelled to trade here. And then he gets the better pieces, even though you do get a pawn back. Instead, d5 is the main move. And after such a move, bishop to c5. So again, you're attacking the e pawn. Black can say, go ahead, take it. and. Uh, there is a very unique line here that I do want to show after you take. He's going to attack. And you might be thinking, d6. Isn't this, isn't this pretty good for white? But now, knight to c6 uh, seems OK. I pin you. And so now probably I'm going to like win an exchange here if you move your knight. Well, black can take. 
And I, I quite like this idea here. So you can take on e8, and then you can take the knight, and you'll, you'll have won an exchange. Uh, you are losing your central pawns, so OK. But you have a really clever move here that's cute. You'll notice that knight doesn't have anywhere it can move. So you can play the move h3. And even if he takes, you steal your turn, but you have nowhere to move your knight. If, if you go here, you unprotect your rook, and there's just nowhere else to go. So now you will take the exchange next move, and you'll take on e7. And uh, yeah, this is the kind of thing you can expect when you play the Grunfeld. And in the Grunfeld in particular, don't just take the pawns. Get your pieces to good squares. It uh, usually tends to matter a lot more than just being greedy and winning material. All right, coming in at number six, we have the Queen's Indian, which has been played in 91,000 games, uh, very close to 92,000, or 3.78% of all D4 openings. OK, so we'll get back to a position that's reached several times. Now, most white people, uh, white players will play knight to c3 here, and you might get the Nimzo. But uh, white can also try to avoid these lines by playing knight to f3. OK, so now you can play the Danny Machuca specialty, the Bogo Indian. You know, he loves, he loves a good check. You know, how can you resist a perfectly good check? Well, the most popular move here for black is actually b6, with the idea of putting this bishop perhaps on b7, where you control the e4 square, which is very crucial in this line. Or you might even go all the way to a6 with some inconvenient pressure on the c-pawn. Um, there are a couple different ways white can play. If you play knight to c3, probably after bishop to b4, uh, your Nimzo players will, will be happy. Uh, a3, the Petrosian variation, that's a, that's a very decent way to play. But g3, this is the, the Fianchetto variation, is the most popular. And you might be surprised to learn that the, the main move is not bishop to b7, but bishop to a6, the exaggerated Fianchetto. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with bishop to b7. And this opening, uh, black is just really solid. And it tends to lead to sort of dry, boring positions. So we'll breeze through it. Uh, we'll just get through it. And black is not committed to anything in the center yet. He's waiting. He's letting white uh, see how he wants to set up. And now black can trade some pieces and uh, get a, a relatively equal position, which all right, we have to focus, get a little more, gain a little time here. So we'll just breeze through this one. And you can see it's just, you know, sporing. It's a normal position. Black is comfortably equalized. Uh, so there are players that you like to play really solid. Then this is a good opening choice for you. Also rather solid is the, the bishop to a6 line, though there are some complications that are possible. Now, uh, bishop to a6. The reason you might play this, you think, well, white's just going to defend his pawn. But there's not actually a super convenient way to do it. Playing e3 doesn't really make sense after you've played g3. Knight b to d2, or even knight f to d2, uh, doesn't make a lot of sense blocking in your bishop. Um, so b3 is the most popular way to play. Um, queen to a4 is very possible. But after bishop to b7, you know, they're saying, OK, what's your queen doing over there on, uh, on a4? I will show one gambit line briefly. Uh, there's a move that's sort of recently become pretty popular in the queen to c2 line here. And after black attacks in the center, the move white wants to play is d5. Um, but unfortunately, it's protected twice. But unfortunately for black, white can sacrifice. So this is uh, becoming a fashionable line. So you are gambiting upon and Black is really advised to play bishop to b7. Uh, if we play here, a blunder. So who can, who can solve this tactic in the audience? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> exactly. Yep, yeah, queen to d4. So even if the knight moves back, uh, as mentioned, yeah, the rook is hanging. So, OK. So instead, he goes back, and we develop, and now the, the the, piece, the pawn is actually hanging. And all right, for time, I guess I won't go too much into the line, but there's been some really aggressive games. White's attack can come actually surprisingly quickly. Um, he's going to get a quick e4, e5 in. 
the rook comes to d1, you know, the knight comes out, bishop comes out, and you can get a surprisingly good attack. So there's been some really decent high-level games in that position. But uh, we'll look very briefly at b3, the most popular move. And you're likely to get a very, you know, it's when you play this opening, this is what you hope for. You get a position like this, super solid. White doesn't have a whole lot here. Uh, he's maybe a smidge better, but uh, a super solid opening. So uh, a decent way to play for black if you're trying to equalize. All right, coming in at number five, we got the Benoni with 94,000 games or 3.87% of all D4 games. Uh, so for the Benoni, after night here, uh, so one way to play this position is to attack the center immediately with the move c5, and after d5, we've reached the Benoni. Now we've covered the Banco Gambit, which is actually the most common way for black to play in this position. So b5, sacrificing a pawn, uh, is the most common way to play. So for a change, we'll look at the modern Benoni, which is the move e6, and we can see the, the plans for both sides after we reach this position. Uh, the closed center makes it really easy to understand where both sides should be playing. Black has more space on the queen side, so you can expect a6, b5 coming up, and white intends e4, f4, e5, breaking through in the center. So sometimes white just plays in the center and squashes black, but sometimes black gets enough counterplay on the queen side. And so there's a certain style of player that you know is really suited. They like to play this, get a lot of counterattacks, and they don't mind an aggressive white player trying to just storm them and crush them right away. Uh, the most popular move here is e4, not the only move. And now it's time for black to decide what he's going to do with this bishop. Uh, probably doesn't belong on e7, trapped behind the pawns. So when you play d5, you weaken this diagonal. So the bishop is going to come to g7. All right. Now you can play knight f3, followed by either, you know, Bishop e2 and castling, or h3 and castling. But the, the most critical way is f4. I'm just going to play e5, and I'm going to crush you. OK. Uh, so we reach this position. Black was just about to castle. So you could play knight f3 here. But you can play one interfering move. Uh, so bishop to b5. And it's uh, a lot of people here, they might make a mistake with black. because. The obvious moves are either to put this knight here or the bishop here, but those are both bad for the, the same reason. So the main move is actually knight f to d7. Uh, but let's look at that a little, little more closely. So what's wrong with uh, knight b to d7? Well, now the move e5 comes and white is better in this line. For example, you can take, the knight has to move e6. OK, but does black have some tricks up his sleeve? It is going to get complicated after queen h4 check. If you play g3, doesn't black have a very well-known trick here? Knight takes g3. Uh, well, yes, white is intending to, for the moment, uh, forgo with the, the rook. So we're going to lose an exchange here. But you have lots of pieces hanging on d7. So take my rook. You're attacking my, my knight. I could take on d7 right now, or I can simply protect my knight. And you can't really castle, because I'm taking on d7. So uh, you can weaken my queen side, not the only move. Uh, might seem a little controversial to give away that big bishop. But he's hoping now, if white ever castles queen side, that he won't be terrifically safe. And then he should force the issue, and you should trade on d7. And you reach a really complicated position, but white should be better here. Um, so well-prepared player. Uh, should do quite well with the white pieces here. Which is why the unusual looking knight f to d7 is played in this position. OK. a4. Again, you might have thought knight to f3 was coming. But if you just play knight f3, black intends a6 and b5. So a4 prevents that idea. And now, uh, again, there's two moves. So you can castle. Or you can play queen to h4 check. Castling is the more common. Uh, we'll try to understand why. So here, you know, you're provoking g3, but you have wasted some time with your queen maneuver. 
Uh, so we'll, we'll get to the, the main position here. After you castle, black's plan is knight to a6. And he's looking at going to one of two squares. Now in this queen, uh, the, when the queen check line, white has time to play rook e1, which won't be true in the, the castling line. So any variations with knight to c7 won't be as effective because the bishop has the f1 square, and it can go to g2 or h3 and make an appearance over on the king side. Uh, so black will almost always go for the knight to b4 lines, which does add a little bit of pressure. Uh, white will voluntarily re retreat the bishop. And how are you uh, ever going to get a5 and a6 and b5 in? Well, commonly b6. Not so much to play bishop a5 and trade, more to just develop the uh, bishop to b7 before either putting a knight or uh, a rook on, on the b file and playing here, or swinging the rook all the way over to get more pressure on the e pawn. Uh, by contrast, we'll look back at this position and we'll cast. Uh oh, it's not going to like it. We're going to castle. Um, so in this line, you'll notice now uh, you, you do have this move, which again is a common enough way to play. Play might continue as follows. We'll just breeze through for time. And you'll notice this is a, in a, an aggressive attacking plan for white. He maneuvers the bishop over to f2, where it'll make an appearance over on the queen side. Sometimes it'll go to g3 so that you can play the move e5. Sometimes it'll go to h4, harassing the queen. Um, so in the queen check line, that's one thing that you prevented. You provoked the move g3. So that is one plan that you prevented. But more common, and I, I know I'm going quick, but we don't have a whole lot of time here. So knight to c7, and you don't get to retreat to f1. Instead, you have to go to, say, d3. And now the plan for black is to get the move b5 in. He's going to play rook to b8. And from c7, not only does the knight keep a watchful eye over the d5 square, but he's, he's also watching over b5. So he will try in the future to get the move b5 in. And you'll get such a position. White is ready to play e5. Uh, all of his pieces are ready for it. Um, and then the big question will be, uh, will it just blow black off the board, or does he have enough going on on the queen side? So a uh, very interesting opening, and uh, we'll have to leave it there for today. Coming in at number four, we have the semi-slav with 95,500 games, or 3.93% of all games. So again, we're, we're moving up the list, but we're still only 3% of uh, all the games here. The semi-slav. OK, so we'll look at this move. Obviously, a very decent way. You know, you protect the pawn in the center. Uh, knight f3 is the most common move here. After knight to c3, which is very possible, uh, you do need to know moves like d takes c4, and even the move e5, the winner or counter gambit. But this move sort of prevents that if you take on c4, uh, you're going to get into, back into sort of a Queen's Gambit accepted line. Uh, so in this position, c takes d4 would be the Slav, which just barely didn't make the list. Um, e6, the semi-Slav, is what we're going to be looking at today. A position that I, I quite like for both sides. The move that's the most aggressive and perhaps the best way to try for an advantage is bishop to g5. But we're going to take a look at uh, the slightly more popular e3. And in particular, half of the games that go this way will lead to the Moran, which black waits sort of a move. It's, a, it's sort of a half waiting move. He's waiting for uh, white to decide what he's going to do with his bishop, because as soon as the bishop moves, he's going to take on c4. And if the bishop takes back, play an early b5 to get this bishop out. Um, so queen to c2 would be a totally different line here. It's a, it's a perfectly good waiting move for white, and black has to think about a different setup but today we're going to look at bishop to d3. Um, OK, so now black will take. And this is now the, the Moran. So after you take back b5, and there's all three of these retreats are moves, but bishop to d3 by far the most popular. How are we doing on time, Ben Simon? Uh, 45 in. 45 in? All right. <clears throat> Got to pick it up. So in this position, the plan for black is a6, solidifying the b-pawn, and c5. Also, he wants to put the bishop on b7. 
So there's two moves here. You can play a6 immediately or bishop to b7. Bishop to b7 is the more popular. Uh, but let's take a quick look. And then, unfortunately, it has to be very quick. Um, so here, white can castle, but then black plays c5. Uh, we don't have time to show it. We'll just show one of the main moves here, which is e4, trying to cause black some problems immediately. So if c5, d5 is the most popular response. Uh, it is worth looking at, at some of these lines here, because I think this line is a very interesting way to play. And there's, there's a lot of sacrifices that are going to happen right here in the opening, because he takes on d4. And now you can take on b5. So, you know, very aggressive stuff. Uh, he, black can take here. I've even had an opponent play this move against me. Um, the most popular is to take. And after we take back, black takes with his g pawn. Uh, we'll have to breeze through it. Again, don't just take stuff. Develop your pieces and castle. Uh, castling is what gives black, or white the, uh, the best percentage of wins in this line. So that's, that's the recommended move. And we'll have to go quite quickly here. But uh, you get such a position. White will eventually play the move a4. And in my personal experience, uh, I've done quite well here with white. I've played it as both colors. But uh, it's a very interesting way to play. But uh, we'll, we'll try to go quickly through this line. Um, do not be tempted to take. Don't just take stuff. Develop your pieces. Because um, after this move, e5, followed by uh, a quick bishop to g5, and we're taking, taking here. Um, and white gets a really good position. Uh, can't show, show everything, but OK. After taking in here, you get a very interesting position where, unlike the bishop to b7 line that we'll take a look at in a second, this pawn is indirectly defended by the bishop. So a lot of lines um, where you, you attack this pawn early aren't going to be as effective, which also means uh, the knight doesn't need to go to c5 here. The bishop does. Um, OK, and now the crucial square to think about here is e5. That's the move that white wants to play. So if he gets to play that, he's usually doing pretty good. And black can deter him for a little bit by putting a piece on e5. And after this exchange, we want to play f4 and e5. Uh, so king h1, getting out of the pin. And in such a position, uh, we do get to play e5. And we're threatening to trap the knight. Uh, G5, though, is an interesting way to play. Um, OK, so in such a line, uh, you know, things are, the knight isn't uh, trapped over here. Both sides have some weak stuff. It's a very interesting end game that I wish we had time for. All right, but we'll try to get back to the, the main modern line here. Um, now, what usually castles, e4 isn't as effective, I guess we'll, uh, because you haven't wasted a tempo with a6. So this, this line is a little bit better for black. Uh, don't have too much time, so we'll just let's get to the, the main stuff here. Um, castling is recommended. If e4, as in the other line, with a bishop on b7, it's a little bit different. Because, uh, all right, yeah, just, just cut that little part out. <clears throat> all right, bishop to b7. Uh, White will castle, a6, he's going to play c5, e4. And again, uh, you can choose from two moves. d5 is the, the most common. There's a little bit of a difference here if you play e5 based on the fact that your, your bishop is over here on b7. So as seen in the, the following line, if you take here, black can throw in the move, bishop takes f3. And the point is, after he moves his knight, uh, he's going to take here, and black simply can't be worse here. He's going to pick up the bishop on d3, get his bishop out in castle, and uh, he's, he's definitely not worse here. But, okay, d5. Again, don't just take stuff, develop your pieces. Um, so in this line, again, so this is a, a very important move, actually. You're, you're trying to control the e5 square, and uh, after these captures... Uh, the knight will go here. Not the only move, but it's uh, the most common and perhaps the most critical. And so you'll have to defend this pawn with the knight. And 
Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it there. There's some, some pretty exciting stuff here, but uh, I think we gotta got to pick it up. I see Ben Simon over there looking at his phone. So, <laughs> Coming in at number three, uh, we have the Nimzo Indian, which we, uh, we just covered here um, last week. So now we're getting serious. 153,000 games, or 6.31% of all games. Um, so we'll just jump right to it here. All right. Bishop to b4, indirectly controlling the e4 square, so preventing white from playing e4 due to the pin. And we covered the move queen to c2. Um, so today we'll take a real brief look over e3. And uh, we will be quick, not only for time, but I do intend to, at some point here, do a whole lecture on uh, this move, the Rubenstein variation. Uh, the main moves here are castling and uh, but let's just take a quick look at some of the, the side lines here because they're, they're quite interesting. B6 is an interesting move. White's intentions in these lines, normally he's either going to develop normally or he's going to play a move like knight to d2 to prevent doubling the pawns and he'll follow that up with a3. So in, in this line, uh, okay, if we, if we develop normally, we get some normal position. But let's just look at uh, this line here because it's of interest. Now black can play. Bishop to a6. And after a3, if you just retreat back to e7, um, you can get sort of a, an exciting line. The knight comes in. And in this position, well, you can play king takes f1. Or the very interesting, taking on e6. And if you retreat your bishop, we take on f7. And there's two ways to play here. You can play queen to b3 after king to e8, knight to d6. That's a, that's a very annoying thing. Uh, also, Aronian has had this position, and he preferred the move e4. He played an early e4, e5. Um, but for brevity here, let's go ahead and uh, we'll take a quick look at another popular line, c5. and. One of the points here, black is going to establish uh, his pawns on the dark squares. So just to give you a quick look at what that might look like after some normal developing moves. Uh, so he has doubled white's pawns. He's never really worried about the move d5, though sometimes white will end up playing it, um, because closing the center will be good for him. And then the fact that you have doubled pawns might actually end up hurting you. So white usually will, you know, for as long as he can, keep the tension. And here he can sort of wait um, after the following moves. He can play a move like rook to b1. The point is sometimes um, after we play aggressive moves like f4, trying to get an attack going, uh, black might take this pawn, and then our pawn will have to move. And then black will uh, you know, try to jump into some of these squares, uh, you know, for example, b4. And sometimes. You'll have a queen on c2, and you want to be able to sacrifice the exchange. Uh, just to give you a quick, in you know, a really brief view, uh, this is what happens. And OK, so white gets in a little attack going, and he's going to play on the, the king side. But uh, coming in at number two, we have the queen's gambit declined uh, with a very large portion of games, um, 204,000 games, or 8.42%. I thought this was going to be the, the most common opening, but, uh, but I was wrong. There's one that's even more popular. Perhaps by now you've uh, figured it out. Or if you're smart enough, you just went down in the, the info below and you read what all the openings are. <clears throat> um, OK, the queen's gambit declined. All right, so one of the most solid ways to play. And we'll briefly touch on all of these variations here. Um, we looked at this position before. and. I recommended the move C takes D5, the exchange variation, and showed how that's one of white's best ways to play for an advantage. And uh, all of the main lines that occur after bishop to G5 have a very, very solid reputation, which explains why it's so popular. Uh, all right. So some very normal moves. And black now has some options. Um, knight B to D7 is the orthodox defense. and He's, again, waiting for uh, the bishop to move before you take on c4. White can make a nice waiting move, rook to c1. Usually the c file is going to open up, so the rook will be good there eventually. And uh, after the following moves, now he takes. 
he can play what's often known as the uh, Capablanca freeing maneuver. And now we trade all of the pieces, and we get a very solid end game. All right, he gets to move e5 in. And OK, you get a position like this where there's not much for either side. But fans of playing end games or you know, certain positions like this, they like playing these really solid positions where the computer will assess it as perfectly equal. But knowing the, the themes and ideas in the opening will matter the most. So for a certain, certain type of people, this is the opening for you. All right, we'll jump back here. Most often, black will insert this move. It's a very useful move. Uh, what are you going to do with your bishop? Uh, you can take on f6, but uh, most people will play here. Um, the Tartakauer is the most popular. Uh, we'll mention also the Lasker variation. Again, we trade all of the pieces, and we get you know, roughly the same ending where this happens again. Uh, so we're noticing some similarities here. Instead, b6, the Tartakauer, this is the most popular. Um, unsurprisingly, we trade everything. And <clears throat> so you, with the pawn on d5, you're at least saying, well, now a bishop to b7 doesn't make a lot of sense. Black will have to try for something like c5. Uh, obviously, at the moment, if you play c5, d takes c5, and your d-pawn is hanging. So bishop to e6. And now white does have a cute little maneuver uh, that's worth knowing. Queen to a4. After c5, we'll understand the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Queen to a3. OK, so pinning the pawn, um, we'll, we'll have to leave it here. All right, coming in at number one, we have the King's Indian. Uh, this has been played 336,000 times, or a whopping 13.85% of all D4 games. Um, all right, so I wonder if you guys were able to predict at home that this was going to be the, uh, the most popular opening. Uh, we see here g6. And after knight to c3, bishop to g7, allowing white to get the big pawn center. Uh, castling is possible, as demonstrated by Fisher, but d6, overwhelmingly the main choice. Uh, we have covered the classical variation before, so unfortunately we do have to be quick. d5 is possible, but then black can play a5, knight to a6, and then knight to c5. So normally he waits until black provokes him. And we've seen this position before, and we studied the line knight to e1, uh, which has the idea of playing moves like f3 and bishop to f3 to f2, defending against black's oncoming attack. Uh, he's going to play over here on the king's side and get all of his pawns rolling and try to checkmate white before white crashes through on the queen side. So when you play this way and you're playing as white, either you get checkmated or you win on the queen side and then black just flounders around and you slowly strangle him to death. Uh, so for a change, we'll look at the move b4, the bayonet attack, also a very popular move, and a move that's saying, OK, you can do what you need to do on the king side. Uh, I'll do what I need to do on the queen side, and I'll just get right to it. I'm going to have to play c5 at some point, so I'm just going to do what I want to do. So the most popular response from black, is to get on with his idea, and he's going to play f5. Another possible alternative, though, that's worth mentioning, whenever you play b4, you want to be thinking about what happens if they play a5. Um, obviously, if you play just b5 after b6, you have no counterplay on the queen side, so this would be dreadful. Uh, you see, play bishop to a3. Um, taking on a5 is also an idea, but this is uh, the stronger way to play. After taking, you're ready to play c5, but uh, knight to d7, eyeing the, the c5 square, trying to make it hard for you. And all right, you get more space over here. Uh, you're going to play a5. And this is an interesting move. Black intends to play f5, but whenever he plays f5, he needs to worry about the following maneuver. And even if you're sacrificing a pawn, it's, it's so common to put that knight on e6, where you're going to have to give up uh, your bishop which is actually one of your strongest attackers um, in these lines. And you're opening up lines on the, in the center and on the queen side. So this is what he's uh, preventing with the move bishop to h6. All right. And you could get such a position. Um, not the only way to play. And now uh, you finally get to move c5 in. And 
White is much better in the following continuation. All right, you get this position. This pawn is a bit weak. Uh, we have constant pressure here. Um, we got the, all these open files on the queen side. Uh, but black, you know, he will get some active play, but, uh, but white should be better in this line. Okay, but now back to the main line here, uh, knight to h5. And he's heading to the f4 square potentially. So for a long time, the move that was played here was g3 to prevent you know, uh, the knight from coming in here to f4. I was thought, okay, knight f4 is just too strong. You have to prevent it and weaken your king side. Uh, but uh, Kramnik really popularized this variation again. Uh, he didn't invent it, but you know, he, he added some new ideas. And his idea was rook to e1. So the point is now, if knight to f4, we can play bishop to f1. Uh, OK, but let's, get, let's get to it here. f5, here he comes. And we jump in. We're going into e6, even if it uh, costs us the pawn. OK. Uh, I'll just briefly mention if knight to f4, you can take and uh, play rook to c1, and you'll play c5 soon. Well, can't go into more, more depth at the moment, unfortunately. And OK, we'll get a position like this. The bishop actually makes a lot of sense on f3 because uh, the e pawn and the d pawn are likely to move in the future. And unfortunately, the game here is just starting. This is sort of the starting point for the variation, but it's the ending point for our lecture. Uh, so yeah, so thank you guys for uh, coming. That's, those are the most popular responses to d4. Um, again, I will be filling in for Mike Comer for the whole month of April. So if you do have games you want to see analyzed, send them in to info at stlouischessclub.org, and uh, maybe you'll get to see it on one of these shows. As usual, send in your submissions. What uh, opening do you guys want to see next? What top 10 lists do you guys want to see next? Please hit like, share, subscribe, and uh, thanks everybody for coming out tonight.